Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be talking about the SIG Romeo 7S. But before we get into that, I do need to thank the sponsor of the channel and the video, and that is of course Gun Deals. Gun Deals, if you don't know, is a website that provides you with links to some of the best deals in the industry on a wide variety of products. So if saving money is of interest to you, go ahead and check them out. Once again, that is gun.deals. They don't buy or sell anything. They don't take your money. They merely point you in the right direction so once again go ahead and check them out and thank them for sponsoring the video and the channel and if you want to help me out personally go ahead and like share and subscribe as all that sort of stuff is free and it does help me out quite a bit also go ahead and comment literally anything down below on top of that there's subscribe star which is basically just a pro to a patreon if you want to support the channel and get entered in some cool giveaways on top of that there is also my website which has a couple mark twos maybe no mark twos left at this point if there's nothing on there. I will be having more stuff soon. A little bit of a sneak peek. I am getting some Mark 3s in. I have basically all of the parts on order for them. It's going to be 14 and a half inch pin and weld with a flash hider to make it a legal 16 inch non short barreled rifle up receiver. And on top of that, I'm also going to have some Mark 1's back in stock with a little bit different part list, uh, a much higher quality barrel in my opinion for the exact same price. So with all that out of the way, now let's go ahead and talk about the Sig Sauer Romeo 7S. Now I have absolutely no relationship with Sig whatsoever. They don't know I exist and that is perfectly fine. I paid $160 of my own money for this optic. I believe I bought it from Borelli.com. Usually these are like $199 to like $230. However, it was 20% off. So I got it shipped for 160 bucks, which is a pretty good price for not necessarily the most ultra budget red dot, but it's also not a very expensive one either. So now let's go ahead and get into some of the boring specifics about the optic. So what we have here is not quite a micro sized red dot as you can see it's a little bit bigger than like your Romeo 5s and other micro style like aimpoint t1 to t2 style of optics however this does take the exact same mounts which is a departure from the larger Romeo 7 which is a cope m4 this is more of a cope m5 and this one here of course takes comp m5 mounts now Having T2 mounts is a big plus because that means there is a huge variety of mounts that you can put on it. However, for all of the testing that I did with this optic, we used the included mount and the included lower one third spacer, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The housing, they say that it is made out of aircraft grade aluminum, which to me doesn't really mean anything. I believe that it's 6061. If it was 7075, they probably would have said that. It also includes a couple flip caps that are see-through, which is kind of nice, helps to protect your lenses if you need extra protection on them. Now, as you can probably tell just by looking at it, we do have exposed windage and elevation turrets, and they're not really recessed as you might think. They actually just have more material kind of pushed up around them to protect them. And I haven't had any sort of issues with leaking or water damage or anything else like that. And I like the look, I think it's a little bit more sleek and of course a little bit easier to adjust, which is one of the, you know, most red dots can be a little bit more difficult to adjust. However, with this red dot, you're probably not gonna be doing much adjustment. And we'll get to that in a little while. Now, the battery tray is also here on the side for your AAA battery. One of the big differences between the uh, 7 and the 7S is, of course, the 7S is much smaller, and it also uses a AAA battery instead of a AA battery. Now, the battery life on this optic is purported at the standard 50,000 hours on setting 6, I believe. Now, speaking of this, we, of course, have our battery cap on front, which is captured and, of course, screwed in place. And then we also, on the rear of it, we have our illumination dial. Now, I think we have, like, 12 settings. I believe it is two night vision settings and then 10 daylight settings. And this red dot 
gets extremely bright, which is one of the downsides of it, and we'll talk about that later as well. But it gets extremely, extremely bright. Uh, and of course, it has night vision settings, which are basically not seeable during the day or to the naked eye, which is uh, good for night vision, though I don't think this optic is going to be particularly good for that. Now, something that might seem appealing to some people when looking at this optic is they'll notice that it is a 22 millimeter objective versus the standard smaller 20 millimeter objective. Now, some people might think that that gives them a lot wider field of view. However, it's really not that noticeable. It is just the slightest of difference in terms of your actual field of view through the optic. Though again, it's a red dot, so a bigger window isn't necessarily better. And again, you should be having both eyes open. So the smaller 20 millimeter windows for me are perfectly fine, no issues. There is a slight preference for me, honestly, for something like a 30 millimeter or like an EOTech. I do like having a bigger window, although I know that it doesn't really affect performance. It's more of just, again, a personal preference sort of thing. This is a 22 millimeter objective. It's slightly larger, but it's not really enough to make much of a difference. Now, the mount that it comes with is actually quite good. So you have a very large cross bolt that's a very strong bolt that's not going to snap. Generally speaking, I had this at 60 or 65 inch pounds of force holding it down, which is quite good for a red dot. It also has locking lugs on the bottom of the mount itself to really mate up to the uh, upper receiver to make sure that it's not going to be shifting during recoil or sharp impacts. And of course, have a little bit more repeatable of a zero when you take it off and reinstall it. Though again, this isn't a QD mount or anything else like that, though of course you can find them online. So that's about it for the basics of the red dot. Now let's go ahead and talk about the dot, of course, which is probably one of the most important aspects of any red dot and the glass. Starting out with the glass, you have the most minorest of bluish green tints to it. It's not very aggressive whatsoever. If you look through a lot of hollow sun optics, most of them have a much more noticeable notch filter, which can help the dot look a little cleaner, a little brighter in certain circumstances, you know, to give you that good contrast. It's also, of course, going to help save your battery life. But on the flip side of that, it's of course going to have a slight discoloration and make it much, much worse for night vision. I'm not into night vision at all right now. So for me right now, it's not that big of a deal. However, of course, if you are into night vision, I still don't think that this is going to be to that level of uh, acceptable performance, especially if you're spending, you know, many, many thousands of dollars on your night vision setup. You probably don't want it held back by a more budget and red dot. However, for everything except for night vision, the glass is actually more than acceptable for me. Very easy to use in low light, white light situations, that sort of thing, using it out to distance with a magnifier. The glass holds up very, very well, especially uh, compared to other red dots in its price point and of course, even above its price point that aren't really designed for night vision. No, it's not going to compare to Aimpoint or EOTech in terms of its glass quality, but you're also not paying those dollars for it either. Now, one last very minor thing before we actually talk about the dot itself. I do want to mention that I saw some people online really complaining about the fact that you can see the emitter when you're looking through the glass, when you're actually looking through the optic, because the emitter is on the bottom right side of the glass. Uh, however, never once did it ever actually affect during shooting. You can see it, and if you stare at it, maybe that bugs you for some reason. However, some people online were making it a much, much bigger deal than it actually is, and again, absolutely no issues whatsoever unless you have OCD or something like that. It's probably not going to bug you. So if you see some bad reviews online, I'm not really sure what they were getting at. But again, it is technically there if you really look for it in the bottom right part of your glass, but it's never going to affect you while you're actually using the red dot. Now, moving on to the actual red dot itself. This is why this, even though this performed exceptionally well for me and I really, really like the red dot, it is going to be a somewhat tepid recommend for me at the end of the video. And that is because the dot itself, uh, or not really the dot itself, but it does have some issues around the dot. And what I mean by that is, when you get it up to a higher than acceptable brightness level, when it starts to bloom out, instead of blooming out just the center red dot, it starts to have a pretty bad halo effect around, like it almost looks like an EOTech, although of course, not as precise as it should be. Uh, it's just basically it has an outer circle that starts to really brighten up and then an outer ring around the edge of the glass. When you have the brightness turned up 
well beyond an acceptable level for your environment. So while this is a downside, because all red dots will bloom out uh, when you have them above the brightness level that is needed, the dot will get more fuzzy, larger, star fishing, all that sort of stuff. However, this red dot will do that a little bit faster and worse than other red dots. So where that could be an issue is if you're going from a high light environment to a low light environment, say you're going from outside where it's very bright and then into a house or something else like that and you pull it up, you're going to have a very, very messy image if you don't adjust your dot. Now, you should be proactive about adjusting your brightness anyways, as that is, you know, your aiming point. You want to maintain a good aiming point at all times in all different situations. So I don't think that it is really that big of a downside. And again, it's one of those things that I saw online, people making a huge deal about it. However, once again, when you set it at the appropriate brightness level, it was never an issue. And the dot itself is actually very, very clean. As you'll see after we do the drop test with a magnifier, I was able to get very, very good groups with the red dot itself because the dot at the appropriate brightness level is very crisp, is very clean, and does not bloom out whatsoever. However, say if the environment calls for setting seven and you're at setting 11 or 12, well, yeah, it's gonna be blooming out and you're gonna get a lot of halo effect around the dot itself. And my advice to you would just be to use the proper brightness level. So for me personally, it's not that big of a downside, but some of you may have to work around that and it may bug you guys more that you have to manage your red dot in different environments more than other red dots because while the Sig Romeo 5 and other red dots that I'm gonna show you a little bit later do bloom out and that red dot starts to get, of course, larger, more fuzzy, that sort of stuff at higher brightness levels, it does not have the same halo or ghosting effect that the 7S does. And this does appear to be an issue with all 7Ss, not just this one. So that is an issue, and I don't want to say that it's not an issue, but for me, the other kind of benefits of the optics outweigh that for me. And again, in normal, like daylight shooting, outdoors shooting, if that's what you do most, and you have it to the appropriate brightness level, which most of the time outdoors is like 10, 11, or 12, again, depending on your environmentals, uh, the dot is going to be very crisp crisp and very clean in almost every circumstance. The only time that it won't be is when you have it set far above the required or recommended brightness level for your environment. So I don't want to harp on it too much, but again, it does ghost and it does uh, have that halo effect at higher brightness levels when the environment doesn't call for it. So being mindful of that, if the rest of this video interests you, keep that in mind that the dot uh, does have some downsides in, again, certain situations. However, those situations can be very easily remedied by just using the appropriate brightness level. Now, since I've had this red dot, I have had it on three different guns. I've had it on this Faxon 11.5, which is pretty decent, and it's actually what we're going to be talking about next week, so a little bit of a spoiler alert there. I've also had it on a Roscoe 16-inch gun, which will eventually be converted into a budget race gun. And then on top of that, I had it for the Mark II testing. Basically, all I used was this Sig Romeo 7S, as well as a very simple competition, which I've talked about in uh, previous videos. So overall, I've had this for probably 12 to 1500 rounds over the last month and a half, two months or so. And again, the reason I've been using it a lot recently is because I personally really, really like it, even though the dot can bloom out if you put it up to much higher brightness levels than is needed. Now, overall, I have not experienced any loss in zero whatsoever due to recoil or to the drop test, which we'll go ahead and talk about now. So basically every single optic that I test gets a double drop test. This was no different. So it is two shoulder height drops onto dirt and rocks. Uh, so in this case, did a five round control group with this exact upper receiver with just some Wolf 55 grain ammunition. Went ahead and did the double drop test, did another five round group and had exactly zero shift in zero, no pun intended. So the point of impact did not shift whatsoever between the two control groups after dropping it twice from shoulder height, which is about the harshest impact you're going to give most of your optics and of course doing it twice. Uh, you're very unlikely to drop your rifle, especially with a sling, and you're very unlikely to do it twice in a row. And it passed with the integrated mount, 
with the one third, uh, lower one third riser plate installed, it passed with flying colors, no issues whatsoever. So in terms of its design and being able to hold zero while under recoil and of course experiencing very sharp impacts, I would say it passes with flying colors. And now one thing that I do wanna mention about this red dot and most budget red dots is they are incredibly tanky just by their design. For instance, even the lowly Sig Romeo 5, which you can usually find for around $100, $110, depending on where you go. The design, the very small aluminum shell, the aluminum casing that the optics are housed in is incredibly tough. To crush one of these guys or to damage one of these guys, it's going to take in the tens of thousands of pounds of force to actually get one of these to cave in on itself. These are incredibly, incredibly robust. In fact, in last week's video on mounts, I think I dropped this Sig Romeo 5 20 times from shoulder height, which is why you can tell it's kind of screwed up a little bit. But internally, it's perfectly fine, still holding zero, still working perfectly, no flickering, no weird issues whatsoever. And again, that's after, at this point, probably 25 drops and a year and a half of ownership. I've had extremely good luck with that. So budget red dots in general, and I don't even know if you want to call this a budget red dot, uh, considering the MSRP used to be like $350 on it or something. But Budget end red dots or lower end red dots have come a long ways in the last five years in terms of their reliability and their durability, and this is no different. So if we're gonna talk about use case for the 7S, this is where things might tend to get a little bit murky for most people, as it's kind of a in-between price point. You know, in the three to $500 range, you're starting to get into more high-end optics, EOTechs and stuff like that, which are gonna be basically the pinnacle in terms of glass and durability, though the battery life is going to suffer quite a bit. And you can get like low-end aim points for around the $400 price point as well. However, uh, in terms of size and form factor, it's also in a bit of an odd spot because again, the Sig Romeo 5 or the many alternatives to the Sig Romeo 5 are the true micro style red dots, very lightweight, that sort of thing. I think the optic only weighs like three ounces or something like that without the mount. So depending on mounts, it's gonna fluctuate. The Sig 7S or the Sig Romeo 7S weighs in with the mount and the riser plate at like 8.2 ounces. So it's like three to four ounces heavier than most other low end red dots. It's a little bit bigger at 22 millimeters of the actual optic window. So it's slightly bigger. It has, of course, the AAA battery, which is very easy to source. Most people have a ton of them laying around. It does retain the 50,000 hours of battery life, which is quite nice at a medium setting. On top of that, I haven't mentioned it yet, but of course it does also have their MOTAC, which is their motion activated on and off so basically the battery life is infinite or as long as that AAA battery will actually hold charge and for me that is quite nice because that means that the battery life is actually something like 10 to 15 years uh, so I quite like that in terms of long-term durability its ability to survive impacts um, so far the internals are holding up very very well that is really the only question mark on low-end optics you're almost never and I mean literally never going to have an issue with the body uh, or something else like that unless you like crack a lens but the body itself is basically never going to break on you the only thing that's going to go wrong or that I've even heard of going wrong on most of these optics is something about the emitter dying or some of the internals the electronics no longer working properly so that's the only quote unquote question mark on lower end optics that maybe most people aren't going to be as concerned about if you just go out and buy like an EOTech or an Aimpoint. Personally, my mileage, which is of course very, very anecdotal to just me, I have had exceptional luck with all of the SIG red dots, a lot of the Vortex red dots, Hollow Sun even as well at this point, although I did recently kill a Hollow Sun 503CU, uh, which is like a $250 red dot. I killed that just after like five to 10 rounds on a 12 gauge shotgun, so not very cool there, but I did a replacement which we'll talk about a little bit later as well now it's also not really a big red dot as you have the seven which is of course the regular seven which is quite large basically the exact same design philosophy just of course no holds barred in terms of size and weight this one here also retained zero very very well for me very durable uh, this one here i think has gotten dropped four to six times at this point 
30 millimeter objective lens, which is quite a bit bigger and actually does appear bigger and the dot does not bloom out the same way. It has a very crisp, very nice window. Uh, no problems whatsoever with the Sig Romeo 7 other than the fact that this weighs as much as an EOTech 512 and it's of course the same size as an EOTech 512. So it's, I think it's like 12 ounces. Uh, and then the 7S is about 8 ounces, which is kind of an in-between size or form factor without any additional window size over like the Sig Romeo 5. So overall, while I really like the 7S a lot and it's been on my home defense gun for the last month or so, it is a difficult one to recommend because it's kind of in the middle of a lot of things. It's not necessarily a large form factor, but it's definitely not a small form factor. It doesn't have a small window, but it definitely doesn't have a large window either. Uh, it does have a AAA battery which is quite nice i know that's a feature that a lot of people like of course with that auto on and off with sig's uh, great warranty service that sort of thing its ability to hold zero which isn't that much different from other low-end optics with a good mount because the mount is going to be responsible for most of that in my opinion i like the looks i like how sleek it is and i like the way that the mount looks very very solid so aesthetically it's pleasing to me and I know that the dot is going to be one of the biggest downsides for most people of the 7S, which is why I would probably recommend most people don't get the 7S because they're going to work around it. And for some people, it might just be a little bit more annoying than it's worth, especially considering that most of the time you're going to be paying around $200 for the optic when you should be spending, you know, about half that or 70%, 60% of that with the Sig Romeo 5. However, there could also be another alternative that is the perfect mix and that is the Sig Sauer Romeo 5 XDR. This has a very excellent integrated mount with the AAA battery with the Sig Romeo 5, 5 form factor, so it's not the heavier 7S. And it also has a much, much cleaner dot with a 65 MOA, basically EOTech donut of death. We will be talking about this one here in the future because I do think it is quite an interesting proposition in terms of price to performance and value, all that sort of thing, because this is also under $200 and basically does everything the 7S does just a little bit better. So we will talk about that in a later video, but that is the video on the 7S. If you like the looks, if you like the features and the price point that it's at versus some of the other offerings that are there, uh, then you might want to give it a look, but just be aware of the downsides with the window not really being that much bigger uh, for being 22 millimeters versus 20 millimeters you're really never going to notice that in actual use case and of course that dot is going to bloom out faster and worse than other red dots in the same price category so uh, that's about it for me guys i hope you all enjoyed let me know what you guys think of the sig romeo 7s in the comments down below and i will see you guys in the next one peace out That hurt.